Okay, so to begin, make sure your iron is plugged in. I want to take a look here to make sure that your water is filled up. In terms of the temperature setting, I usually just have it set close to max, uh, highest temperature, and also most amount of steam. On your iron, there's most likely going to be uh, two features, perhaps a, a steam feature. So if I hit this, it'll uh, shoot water or steam out this end. And then also a spray feature that has a spray nozzle here, which I'm not going to use. Uh, if you don't want to use this, you can also just purchase a cheap spray bottle and put water inside. The first thing, uh, in order to iron your blue shirt, make sure you've washed it so that it's not yellow on the uh, collar area here. I usually like to start ironing the back of the shirt first because it's easy to set up on the ironing board. Okay, so as you can see here, I use the head of the ironing board and I just rearrange the shirt so that way it lies flat. The flatter you get it, the better it is to iron, the easier it is to iron, rather. Okay, I'm just, as I'm doing this, my iron is heating up. Once I'm set, I'll take my iron, and I simply push down and across. I can do it in this format here. I can also do ironing like this. Okay, but you always want to make sure that the fabric is tight at all times, because if it is not, and if it's overlapped like so, you will iron creases into your uniform, which is what you do not want, this crease in a random location. It's easy to get rid of, because all you need to do is just iron it away. Okay, this tail is not as important because it will most likely be tucked into your pants. So this is a better place to focus near the upper back to mid back area, making sure that there are no creases or any bumps or any types of wrinkles anywhere on your shirt. Okay, and you can take this and just shift it over like so. Again, making sure that it is as flat as possible. Okay, there, there is a built-in crease here, so you just do your best to make sure it looks flat. Okay, you want to pay attention to these areas here too, because they tend to get a little bit wrinkly quick. Okay, so same process. If it's particularly wrinkly, I might push to add more steam. All right, in this case, it's not too wrinkly, so I'm not going to have to do that too often. Okay, and I'm paying attention again to the side here, which is a nice place to iron. Making sure everything looks flat. Be careful, it is hot. All right, and now the back should look relatively free of major wrinkles. I could have done a better job here, but just for time's sake, I'm going to continue. The next part I do next is the front side. I like to do the front side next because, I don't know, just <laughs> preference, I guess. It's up to you. Um, so again, I laid it using the, the head of the ironing board and just put it so that way it rounds out my shoulder. Make sure everything is flat. Okay, at this point, the front is usually an area where you want to pay a bit more attention to your ironing because everything here is very easily um, seen on your uniform. All right, so again, as the uniform is tight on the ironing board, I might have to stretch the material a little bit just to make sure I get that perfect flat surface. Okay, you want to iron the side where that seam is. Okay, and the pocket area. So reminder, good reminder is not to iron your pocket button for the fear of it melting as you iron it. So you iron right beside it if you need to. A few passes should be fine. You also want to iron the top area here. Okay. All right, and as you can see here, it looks two times better at least than what it was before. And this is just with basic iron and some a little bit of steam. Now. When I do the other side, I am going to show you what I do with the speed starch. So I lay the uniform against the head of the ironing board here again. And then I would take 
this bottle of speech starch. Making sure I shake it a little bit. And all I will do is I'll just add a little bit. It comes out very thin, but I usually just spray it as if I'm just uh, lightly coating the uniform with it, and it dries very quickly. There's also a fresh linen scent. If you purchase the one that I have currently, and it smells quite nice. It leaves the uniform in a, in a bit of a, a stiffer state, meaning that the creases stay sharp for longer. Um, the only downside is really that you have to keep purchasing the starch if you choose to use it, but if you use it sparingly enough, it should last you for a good amount of time. And there, just like that, and it's a good, decent product we have here. As I lift it, there's a, a bit of a different feel to how this side feels compared to the other side, but feel free to experiment if you are interested. Now the next part um, is going to be the sleeve. So in order for me, the sleeve, my sleeve already has a, a crease in it, but the way I did that, and the way I found my crease was by doing this button here, and I fold this epaulet in half, like so, and I pinch that area, and I pinch this, and it should be right along that line. Okay, and then what I do is I lay this flat on the ironing board like that, putting it with my thumbs, and then flattening it out as best as I can. Okay. Just like that. I'm gonna take my iron, and this is where you can apply a little bit more pressure because the top crease, or this shirt sleeve crease here, is a really good way of showing how well you do your uniform. So it's got a little bit more steam on the, this part. Now remember to, to constantly keep your iron moving. If you don't, you might smell some burning, or something burning rather, and then it, uh, it'll be your uniform. There you go, and a nice sharp crease right down the middle of your sleeve. Beauty. All right, we'll do it to the other side real quick. This time I will do the same method I did last time uh, with the starch, rather. Okay, so we find the crease. In this case, again, once you have your crease set, um, your washing cycles may fade the crease a little bit, but it'll always be there. So as long as you keep ironing down on that line, it's very important. A word of caution, however, is that if you don't find the crease correctly, when you iron it, you will have two creases. And two creases on your uniform alongside each other is what we called railroad tracks because they look like railroad tracks. And we don't want those on the uniform. Okay, so there I just use some speed starch, clothing starch, and I'm just quickly ironing it so that way it dries out. There are no wet spots left on my sleeve. It's hot. And there we go. That's a quite a sharp crease there. All right, so this crease would be the level uh, of a senior cadet. Well, this one here is also quite good too. They are actually both pretty good. Now, if you notice that your epaulet's looking a little wrinkly or down for wear and your ranks don't seem to fit on your slip-ons rather don't seem to fit on nicely and they don't stay flat. You can always take that, uh, lie it flat like that and take your iron and just quickly iron over it, just like that. And all the wrinkles are gone. There you have it. The last final touch to what I do to my blue shirts is my collar. Sometimes my collar gets a little bit bent up. There's a little plastic tab in here to keep it the, the, the tips from folding in. Um, but what I'll do is I'll take it and I'll fold it I'll put it backward on the table like this. The reason I put it backward is so that way if there's any burning or any types of things coming out of the iron, it doesn't end up visibly on my collar. I'll take this, my iron. Again, there's something plastic under there, so you don't want to leave the iron on there for too long. Constantly moving it. Watch the button over here for your tie. All right, and then just flatten this part out real quick. It only takes me a matter of seconds. And that should suffice, and I flip this over, I have a nice, sharp looking collar. All right, so that's all it takes to iron your shirt. 
took me exactly 10 minutes to do this. And uh, yeah, just make sure you hang it up nicely so that way you can work for our next parade night. That's all.